What's up guys, Rogue9 here. I've done some more testing on the suppressors in Rainbow Six Siege, and I'm back to share my results with you. Let's do it. As always, things might become a little bit theoretical as I show my workings, so if you're just here for the final conclusion, feel free to skip forward to 8 minutes and 47 seconds. But I'll actually start out with some of these simpler questions, so it might be worth your time sticking around. So let's start off by examining the destruction ability of the guns once they attach the suppressor. As I demonstrated in a previous video, a link in the description and at the end in case you haven't seen it yet, creating an impulse in a wall in Rainbow Six Siege takes 6 bullets close together in drywall or plasterboard and 10 bullets in wooden walls. And attaching a suppressor to your weapon does not change this at all. The bullet holes that your guns create stay exactly the same size, you need exactly the same number of shots to create an impulse, and the impulse size stays the same. So the short answer there is simply no, the destruction ability of your guns is not changed by adding a suppressor. Brilliant, but what if you're trying to shoot someone through a wall? The suppressor does cause a damage reduction on each gun, as does shooting through walls, so how do these two factors combine? Shooting through two layers of a breachable surface, so any given wall, ceiling or floor, without a suppressor will reduce the damage of your weapon by 50%. If you're shooting through a single layer of a breachable surface, that is a door, a window or a wall where one side has already been broken, the damage of your weapon will be reduced by about 30%. So what happens if you attach a suppressor? Well, the two damage reducing effects are simply applied one after the other. First, the suppressor will reduce the baseline damage of your weapon from anywhere between 8% to 54% and then when you shoot through a wall that new baseline damage is again reduced by about 30% when you shoot through a single layer and 50% when you shoot through two layers. And then of course any distance related damage drop off is added on top of that. A final factor to consider of course is that once you've already shot through a wall if you shoot through that exact same bullet hole or impulse hole again your weapon will not experience any penetration related damage reduction. So when you're firing a long burst at a specific spot in a wall, door or window cover, there's a good chance that some of your bullets may go through unhindered. Ok, so all of this is interesting, but what does it actually mean for our ability to take down an opponent? I mean, having the damage reduction of the suppressor is not great, and then adding another 50% reduction on top of that for shooting through a dual layered wall, that must make your gun almost useless, right? Well, not quite. Because of the way the cumulative damage reductions work out, the final numbers you end up with aren't actually that different for suppressed versus unsuppressed, or at least that's the case for some of the weapons, for others the penalty is somewhat higher. Whether that's a deal breaker or not is something you will have to decide for yourself, and of course results may vary with different distances, but what I can say for sure is that there is no special effect that the suppressor adds when shooting through a wall, it's simply an accumulation of different damage reducing stats. But enough of walls, let's talk about shooting different body parts. When it comes to headshots, the suppressor has no real disadvantage. Any weapon that will kill your opponent outright with a headshot without the suppressor will still do so with the suppressor at any distance. When it comes to shooting an opponent in the legs, the effect is exactly the same as when you're shooting through walls. First the suppressor lowers the baseline damage of your weapon and then the leg damage multiplier is applied on top of that number. Whether you're using a suppressor or not and completely irrespective of distance, shooting a light or medium armoured operator in the legs will cause 25% less damage rounded down and for heavily armoured operators that reduction is 35% again rounded down to the nearest one point of damage. Excellent, and now with the simple stuff out of the way, it's time to really sink our teeth into the meaty part of this video, discussing damage drop off. The first thing I wanted to find out is if attaching a suppressor changes the drop off curve in any way, so does the damage drop off start earlier maybe, or does it bottom out earlier? So to find this out, I took two example weapons, the Mark 17 CQB and the C8 SFW, and I charted their damage drop off curves meter by meter, both suppressed and unsuppressed. And what I ended up with is these two charts, and what they show us is that the damage drop off starts for each weapon 
at exactly the same distance whether suppressed or unsuppressed and also bottoms out at exactly the same distance. So that's that question answered but I also found out something rather interesting if you compare the two charts. You can see that for the Mark 17 CQB the two damage curves actually diverge so the difference in damage suppressed versus unsuppressed at close range is smaller than the difference at long range and for the C8 SFW the exact opposite is true. You have a larger difference in damage suppressed versus unsuppressed when you're close and smaller when you're far away. Now I have to say I know I shouldn't have been surprised by this but I was nonetheless. I mean the easy solution would have been to just have the suppressed damage curve run parallel right underneath the unsuppressed one. But of course the simple solution is not the one used in Rainbow Six Siege because why keep things simple if you can make them complicated for no good reason. So of course the only way we will be able to analyze how damage drop off is affected when suppressing each weapon is by carrying out further tests in the game for each of the guns both suppressed and unsuppressed. Now rather than doing these tests meter by meter as I did for the Mark 17 and the C8, I only compared the damage at two key distances touching damage which is easily before any damage drop off occurs and at 50 meters plus making sure that the damage drop off had already bottomed out and I was getting a consistent result. And here is my first attempt at making sense of these numbers. I do apologize if the charts are getting rather large at this stage and consequently may be somewhat difficult to read. So if you want to have a closer look at these numbers I will include a link in the description that will take you to an online spreadsheet with all of my findings that you can browse at your leisure. On the left hand side of this table are simply the raw damage numbers I gathered for each of the weapons and then you have the damage reduction going from unsuppressed to suppressed both at close range and at long range in absolute points and as a percentage. And as you can see this paints a rather confused picture like I said earlier some guns have greater damage reduction when close up versus longer range but for others it's the exact opposite. And then you have weapons like the P9 where everything kind of seems to make sense. You have a 10% damage reduction close up and a 10% damage reduction at distance. This line of thought clearly wasn't getting me anywhere so I switched over to this. And you can immediately see that the relationship between these two columns is vastly more consistent if not perfect. So what are we looking at here? This is the percentage difference of the damage of each gun at close range versus long range and the columns are for unsuppressed and suppressed. So what this shows us is if we have a gun unsuppressed what is the difference between maximum and minimum damage dependent on distance and if we have the same gun suppressed what is the difference between maximum and minimum damage. And what this really shows us is quite simple. Guns that have a harsh damage drop off will also tend to have a very harsh damage drop off when they are suppressed and the guns that do well at distance when unsuppressed will also tend to do well at distance when they're suppressed. So the performance of a suppressed weapon at distance is far more dependent on how well that gun can do at distance anyway rather than being suppressed versus unsuppressed. But there are a a handful of guns, eight to be precise, where this relationship is not as strong as you would expect it to be. Seven of these guns will actually suffer a greater than expected damage reduction when suppressed and shooting at distance and the odd one out, the P229 of course, has a massive damage drop off when unsuppressed of 60% but because of the ridiculous close range damage reduction when attaching a suppressor, the suppressed damage reduction close range versus long range is bizarre not as harsh. I think a good summary of the P229 when it comes to attaching a suppressor or the damage drop off is use the bearing. Done. And with that I think we're finally ready to move on to our final recap and conclusion. Because as interesting as raw damage data may be what it really all boils down to is how many more shots to kill do we need when we attach the suppressor in various situations. Welcome back to all of you rejoining us right here and let's start out with a quick recap. Does the suppressor affect your gun's ability to create impulses in walls? No, it does not. You need the same number of shots to create an impulse and the impulse size is exactly the same. What about damage when you're shooting through breachable surfaces? Is that in any way affected by attaching a suppressor? Well, yes, in the way that your gun has a lower baseline damage with the suppressor, which is then further lowered by shooting through a wall, but there's no special interaction that amplifies this effect. Suppressed or unsuppressed, if you 
you shoot through a double layered wall, floor or ceiling, your bullets will do 50% damage. If you shoot through a single layer, like a door or a window cover, the damage of your gun will be reduced by around a third. Headshots with almost all weapons are instant kills with or without the suppressor and if you hit your opponents in the legs, you will see a 25% damage reduction against medium and light armoured operators and 35% damage reduction against heavy armour. And as with shooting through walls, this damage reduction is simply applied after the damage reduction of the suppressor. And now to the final part that we've all been waiting for answering the question of whether the damage reduction of the suppressor actually has a significant effect on the number of shots to kill you require for each gun in various situations. So, in this table on the left hand side we have the raw damage data suppressed versus unsuppressed at short range and at long range. So that's before a damage drop off starts and after the damage drop off bottoms out. And the heat map on the right now shows us the difference in shots to kill suppressed versus unsuppressed at short range versus long range leg shots versus upper body shots, shooting your target directly versus penetrating a double layered wall first, and for light, medium and heavy armor for each of the weapons. So what the numbers mean is how many extra shots to kill you need in that specific situation for that specific weapon when you attach the suppressor. The table is ordered from good to bad and I have conveniently grouped them into five different groups for you. For the first group of weapons, when you attach the suppressor, the guns still perform very well against all types of armor at close range and even when you get further away, whether you're shooting the upper body or legs, the number of shots to kill will only increase by a maximum of one extra shot. The second group also performs quite well at close range but at further distances we see an increased number of shots to kill, up to two or three even. Some guns in the third group can still be quite okay at close range but their lack of performance at longer range, especially if you're landing leg shots, means that attaching a suppressor to these guns is definitely more of a disadvantage already. In the fourth group you have guns that are pretty weak once you attach the suppressor, both at close range and especially at further distances. With these guns you may want to already very carefully weigh up the cost of attaching a suppressor versus the benefits. And finally last and possibly least we have group number five, which I call special cases, that P229 and the SAS G12 or Saiga 12. The P229 is a great weapon at short distance doing a massive 50 points of damage, that's two shots to kill, brilliant. But once you increase the distance you're firing at or you attach the suppressor, really bad things happen really quickly. So like I said earlier, the best way to use the P229 is in fact to simply choose the Bearing 9 instead. When it comes to the Saiga 12, the reason it's all the way at the bottom is because of its abysmal performance at distance once you attach the suppressor, but even with without the suppressor it's really bad, at distance of course, and that makes sense, it's a shotgun, it's meant to be bad at distance. In fact something interesting I came across while conducting tests for this video was that there is a hard range limit on the shotguns. I never knew this before but for the Saiga 12, as soon as you go beyond 40 meters your bullets will simply evaporate mid-air and you will do zero damage. So clearly this gun is not meant to be used at greater distances and if we take that into consideration and simply dis disregard the difference in shots to kill at longer ranges, then this gun probably deserves to be somewhat further up the rankings. In fact, in my last video, where I considered only short range damage reduction, the Saiga ended up at the top of group number three. So the takeaway is that it's probably not as bad as this table makes it look. So there we are, I set out originally to make a quick video weighing up the advantages and disadvantages of the suppressor, and what I ended up doing instead was spending two whole videos videos focusing only on the damage reduction related questions. Well, join me again next time when I finally get to the point and I can finally look at some of the advantages the suppressor gives you, which together with these last two videos hopefully helps you to make a better decision on whether or not the suppressor is something you want to use. If you appreciated my efforts and enjoyed the video, feel free to leave it a like and share your thoughts in the comments below. And with that, I do hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.